They've built robots that sweat, flex muscles, run marathons, and throw punches. And all of it happened just in the past few days. From Clone Robotics' lifelike android to Unitree's upcoming robot boxing match and a half marathon where bots race alongside humans, this is the week humanoid robots got a little too real. Real quick, before we dive in, yesterday we launched our first free course in the AI Content Accelerator community on school, all about AI avatars. It's just the start, we're building a space packed with free tips, tools, and courses to help you get good at using AI for content and even making money with it. Hit the link in the description to join, then come right back to the video. All right, so if you remember clone robotics from before, the ones behind that crazy lifelike torso too, well, they're back at it again. This time, they've gone full humanoid with something called the Protoclone. It's their first full-body musculoskeletal android. And yeah, the goal is to copy human anatomy as closely as possible. Basically, they're trying to build a robot that moves and functions like a real person. They've built it with a polymer skeleton that mirrors all 206 bones in the human body. Well, mostly, with a few fusions here and there to keep things practical. And to make it move like us, they gave it over 1,000 artificial muscles called myofibers. These are fluid-powered, kind of like McKibben muscles, and they work in a way that mimics how real muscles contract. That setup gives the protoclone around 200 degrees of freedom, which basically means it can bend and twist in a ton of different ways, just like a human. On top of that, it's packed with more than 500 sensors, depth, cameras, pressure sensors, inertial units, all working together so it can understand what's around it and respond in real time. Now, what's really interesting is that Protoclone's V1 doesn't have a face, just a black visor. Some folks like that because it looks sleek and doesn't venture into that uncanny valley. Others find it even creepier somehow, but let's not open that can of worms just yet. Another weird but cool feature is the water-based cooling system. In theory, it's like a robot that can sweat to release heat generated by its own muscles. Right now, they're using pneumatics to power its motions, but they're reportedly planning to switch to hydraulics later, which might be quieter or more efficient for bigger loads. But not everyone on the internet is buying the hype. A lot of people are pointing out that it can't yet stand up or walk without support. There have been demos where it's suspended in midair, so it's basically a proof of concept. One commenter joked that the power cord is in an awkward place and that the entire thing is more like a puppet than a real advanced bot. Others say that although it might be a little creepy, it's definitely a step forward in exploring new kinds of actuators beyond the typical electric motors we see in most robots. If you look at the discussions online, especially on Reddit, you'll find everything from jokes about where's the cock to criticisms that it's all a marketing gimmick. People are dropping references to Westworld, saying it's basically the same vibe as the androids in that show. Nobody wants something that looks like a flayed human running around the house. Then again, some folks are super stoked about the future, pointing out that a humanoid design is perfect for performing tasks in environments built for humans, like doing laundry or vacuuming, which is exactly one of clones' stated goals. They want this thing eventually to do chores, cook simple meals, and even last a long time doing tasks on its own. Other people mention the possibility of a meltdown in the robot's popularity because hydraulics can be noisy, expensive, and complicated, not to mention the intense power demands if you want to have a battery that can keep it free from tethers. Even so, the concept is undeniably attention-grabbing. Some watchers say that if the myofiber muscles become robust enough, we might see a real leap in the next decade or so. Moving on from the world of hyper-realistic musculoskeletal robots, let's talk about something that's both entertaining and slightly bizarre, a planned boxing match between two humanoid robots. The Chinese robotics company Unitree Robotics is hyping up an event they're calling Unitree Iron Fist King Awakening. They've posted a brief teaser showing their smaller humanoid robot, the G1, about 1.32 meters tall, sparring with a human and then going head-to-head -head with another G1. It's not the smoothest action, and the bots are definitely not as nimble as a real boxer, but they do get right back up after a knockdown, which is kind of impressive. The biggest issues seem to be with reacting fast enough to dodge punches and then balancing again after a blow. It's basically a balancing and sensor processing challenge right now. But Unitree claims they're improving the G1's full body movement control and using motion capture data sets to teach the robots more lifelike moves, including some dance steps and even a bit of kung fu. They're planning to live stream this boxing match in about a month, though they haven't given all the details on exactly which model of robot they'll use. They also have the bigger H1 robot, which stands around 1.8 meters tall, but maybe that's too big for the ring. 
Some folks online have commented that it's basically going to be a comedy show if these robots can't keep their balance. But I don't know, if Unitree polishes up those reflexes, we could end up with a decently entertaining matchup. And who knows, maybe we'll end up with a full-on robot fight league in the future. A lot of people find it cringy and are worried it's some big publicity stunt, but let's be real, it's definitely going to get views. And if you thought fighting robots was interesting, wait till you hear about a half marathon in Beijing, E-Town, that's going to feature human runners and humanoid robots side by side. The organizers are calling it the 2025 Beijing E-Town Half Marathon and Humanoid Robot Half Marathon, and it's set for April 13th. That's a 21.0975 kilometer race, which is a pretty serious distance even for experienced human runners. Over 30,000 human runners have already signed up, and apparently a bunch of robotics companies, research institutes, and universities are throwing their humanoid robots into the mix. Of course, they'll have physical barriers to keep the robots and humans from literally bumping into each other, which is definitely a good idea if we don't want a fiasco out there on the roads. They'll also have slightly different completion time standards and race rules for the robots because, let's face it, most of these machines can't exactly run like Elliot Kipchoge just yet. But some of them are getting faster. The word on the street is that certain prototypes can hit speeds of up to 12 kilometers per hour, which is no joke when you consider the complexity of bipedal locomotion. Some companies are adding shock absorption systems or specialized running shoes for their robots because you can imagine that repeatedly slamming mechanical feet on pavement for 21 kilometers can do a lot of damage if the robot's not built to handle that. Li Quan, a director in the Beijing E-Town committee, says the race is expected to do more than just show off a cool novelty. It's supposed to be a real stress test for the next wave of robot design, pushing innovations in motors, flexible joints, AI algorithms, and the synergy between software and hardware. It's a pretty big step forward, especially considering the massive crowd of participants and how many spectators it might draw. Tech experts note that having robots run a half marathon tests their overall endurance, stability, and how well they can adapt to unpredictable real-world conditions like uneven surfaces or sudden changes in environment. Sure, they might not be in direct competition with the fastest humans, but just finishing that distance without falling apart could be a huge milestone. This event might also shape some of the industry standards around what robust humanoid mobility should look like. So yeah, all this ties into the bigger shift we're seeing. Robots slowly stepping into human spaces, whether it's running marathons, doing chores, or even boxing for entertainment. The tech isn't perfect yet. Some can't even stand without help, but every weird prototype or gimmicky demo is still pushing things forward. People online are split, joking about missing body parts or calling it Westworld 2.0, while others argue this kind of humanoid design actually makes sense in a world built for humans. Either way, whether it's the protoclone flexing its synthetic muscles or Unitree's bots getting ready to throw punches, one thing's clear. Robots are coming, and they're only getting harder to ignore. So are we building helpful machines or just dressing up tech to feel like God's playing creator? Would you let one of these things live in your house? Or would you smash the power button the second it blinked? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.